Welcome back to Mode Bespoke, I'm Latinas. Today we're going to be working on the bottom part of our bikini. So let's get started. So for our materials, we're going to be using some of this leftover yarn. So if you worked on yesterday's tutorial and you made the top, you might have had some of this yarn left over. So I'll be using that leftover yarn as well as a, a cake of kobu. This will be more than enough yarn to make the bottom in any size you need. You're going to be using the same hook we used yesterday, and that's a 3.5 millimeter hook, as well as your scissors and your yarn or tapestry needle. You can find the PDF pattern for this project on my website. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. Now the only measurement we're going to need is a measurement between your hip bones. So just grab a measuring tape and measure from one hip bone to the other one. This is going to be the width for our bathing suit bottom. So get that measurement and then we can get started. So let me grab my yarn here and we're just going to begin with a slip knot. So let me just get a little bit closer here. All right, it's a quick review. Just wrap the yarn around two fingers and then you're going to insert your hook into that loop you just made. Grab this thread of yarn back here, pull it through that loop, and then just hold it down with your index finger so you can move your other two fingers and tighten up your slip knot. So the first thing you're going to need is a chain of 50. Since we are going to need straps for this bottom, so we're going to begin with the straps first. So wrap your yarn around your hook and pull that top loop through the bottom one to create a chain. So there's one. And then you're just going to make a chain of 50 stitches. And this is no matter what size bathing suit you are making. So chain 50, and then I'll see you again here in just a moment. So here's my chain of 50 stitches. Now I'm going to grab a stitch marker because we're going to have to know where that chain ends. So grab a stitch marker, a safety pin, a bobby pin, whatever you have. Just place it on that last stitch of the chain. So that's going to be the strap. So we will be making a second one of these on the other side of the chain. But first, let me just get my hook back on here. So you're going to take that measurement you took, so the one between your hip bones, and this is where you're going to use it. You're going to make a chain that measures whatever that measurement was. So for the measurement I'm using as an example, which is also what you will see on the pattern, is 12 inches. So I'm going to make a chain that measures 12 inches before I make my last chain of 50. So just to go over what we've just done. So it's chain 50 and then a chain that measures 12 inches or whatever your measurement was. So make that chain and I will see you again here in just a minute. All right, so I've made a really long chain. I'm just gonna grab my measuring tape and I'm gonna measure it. So let me line this up. And I need this to be 12 inches. So you can see it's a little bit over. So I'm just going to grab a another stitch marker. So And you can use a stitch marker, a bobby pin, whatever you have handy. And then I'm going to place it on that 12 inch mark. There we go. So that's going to be the front part of my bathing suit bottom. Let me get all this out of the way. Okay, once you've got that, now it's time to work on our second strap. So you're gonna need to make another chain of 50. I already have a few stitches here, so I'm just gonna count these. It looks like I've got seven. So I'm just gonna make another 43 stitches. You need a total of 50. I will see you when we finish this chain. All right, so I finished the chain. So this is what our work looks like so far. So we got 50, our measurement, and then 50. So now we're ready to begin our first row. So we're just gonna single crochet. So beginning on that second stitch from your hook. So skip the first chain. Go into the second one, you're going to insert your hook into that stitch. And then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And when you have two loops on your hook, you're gonna close your single crochet by making a loop and pulling it through those two loops already on your hook. So you're going to single crochet in every stitch of the chain. So go into the next one, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. 
and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. So here's another single crochet. Okay, so just continue to make one single crochet for every stitch of the chain. I will see you at the end. So I finished making all of my single crochets and now we just have to cut the yarn. So leave a nice long tail end. And then normally I chain one just to make a little knot at the bottom. I should have done that before I cut my yarn, but I try to chain one here anyway. There we go. And that'll make a nice little knot here at the bottom. Pull that nice and tight. And then we will weave these in later. So here's our work so far. So right in between these two stitch markers is where we're going to build up the bottom part of our bathing suit. So the straps on the sides, you're not going to need to touch them again. So let me just grab my yarn. I'll just get to this first stitch marker. So here's the strap. Go to that very first stitch marker. And we're going to start our single crochets. So insert your hook into that same stitch, the one that's got the stitch marker. And let's grab our yarn. And you're going to loop that around your hook. And then pull that loop through the stitch. And then if you're a little bit more experienced, you can just drop that tail end and start to crochet your single crochets. If you don't want your work to pull too much, or if you're a little bit newer at crochet, then grab both of those threads of yarn and we're going to chain one. So wrap your yarn around your hook and pull both of those threads through the loop already on your hook. So we've made that chain one and now we're ready to single crochet. So for this next part, we're going to make a single crochet in every stitch of the row until you get to that second stitch marker. Once you get to that second stitch marker, you're going to stop. So working into that stitch right next to our chain one, we're going to work our first single crochet and then one single crochet in every stitch until you reach that stitch marker. All right, so I've gotten pretty close here to my stitch marker. Here's how our work looks so far. Now I've got one last stitch to make, so I'm going to make one last single crochet in that same stitch with the stitch marker, and there's my row. So to start our new row, we're going to chain one, and then we're going to turn our work around. And we're going to begin our first single crochet in that very first stitch of the row. So insert your hook in this stitch, and then we yarn over and pull up a loop. And now we just single crochet. So you're going to single crochet in every stitch of the row and then we're going to repeat this for a total of four rows. So right now we are on row two. So you want a total of four rows. So repeat this two more times once you finish this row. And then at the beginning of the row, remember you just chain one, turn your work around and start on the first stitch of the row. So complete another, what, three rows because we just began this one. So make a total of four rows. I'll see you again in a minute. Okay, so here we go, I've completed all my rows. So here's four rows. And now we have to make that second strap. So we want it to match the first strap that we did. So in order to do this, we're gonna have to chain 50. So let's turn our work, there we go. Grab some more yarn. All right, and you're just gonna begin your chain right after you did that last stitch of the other row. And we want it to match, so chain 50, and then you're going to single crochet all the way back. So let me get this done and I'll see you here in a minute. So once you finish the strap, you would have done your chain and then your row of single crochets. And then when you're coming back here on the last few stitches of that single crochet row, you're gonna get to what I'm calling the block. So I'm gonna call this the block um, on the pattern. So we're gonna have to single crochet across every stitch of the block. So just get to that next stitch single crochet all the way across. When you get to the other end, you need to make the second strap. So it's gonna be just like this one. So you're gonna to need to make a chain of 50 and then single crochet. So again, let's single crochet all the way across the top of the block. When you get to this side, you're gonna chain 50 and then you're gonna single crochet all the way back. Once you finish that second strap, your work is going to look like this. So here we've got two straps on either side of our bottom. And now we're going to start casting on for our Tunisian work. So let's just pull on the yarn here. So beginning on this very first stitch of the block, 
we're just going to do a regular cast on. So this is the same as what you've seen in my other tutorials for a cast on. You're just going to insert your hook into that first stitch and then you're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and you're going to leave that loop on your hook. And then you're just going to repeat in the next stitch. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Go to the next one, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So cast on one stitch for every stitch of the block. Once you get to the very end of the block, you'll stop right there. That way you don't have to, um, that way you won't cast on, sorry, all of the stitches on the strap as well. So cast on all the stitches on the block. I'll see you here in a minute. All right, so I'm at the end of the block. I've got just the one stitch left right there. So I'm going to cast that one on. And then you're going to work a return pass. So this is what our work looks like once you've already cast on everything. And for a return pass, it's just a regular return pass. So we're going to yarn over and pull through one. Let me get a little bit closer here. So yarn over, pull through one loop. And then for the rest of the row, you yarn over and pull through two. So there's one and then two, and then yarn over, pull through two. One, two, and just repeat until you get to the end of the row and you're left with just one loop on your hook. Now for this next part, we're gonna have to start working decreases on either side of the bottom. This is gonna create th the triangle shape that you normally see on a bathing suit bottom. So we're gonna start our first decrease at the very beginning of the row. So skip the first vertical post and go right into the second one. So you're gonna insert your hook behind that top loop, top leg, top thread, whatever you wanna call it, of the second and third stitches. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you're just going to continue to cast on Tunisian simple stitch until you have about two or three stitches left at the end of the row. So I got to the end of the row, and just to show you what, the, what I mean by the last two stitches, so you've got the final stitch right here, so that one doesn't count. We're going to work with this one and this one. So it's going to be the two last vertical stitches of the row. So I'm going to cast on this one right here because we don't need to decrease for that one. But then once you have those last two vertical stitches, you're going to insert your hook behind that top loop of the first stitch and then the second stitch. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So we're going to turn those two stitches into just one stitch. And now at the end of the row, we're going to cast on just a little bit differently than we usually do. So instead of just inserting your hook behind both of the side threads, so the ones at the very end, I'm going to use that thread that's closest to the Tunisian work. So it's this one right there. So I'm just going to insert my hook back here, grab that one part of the stitch. So it's just that one leg or thread or whatever you want to call it. So it's that one thread right there or that last stitch. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. So that's going to create a nice even edge on both sides of our work. Once you've done that, you're just going to work a return pass. And then I'll see you when we get to the beginning of the row so we can review how to do the decreases just one more time. So to review the decrease at the beginning of the row, you're going to skip that first vertical stitch. And then you're going to work with the two stitches right after that. So just insert your hook through the top loops of both of those stitches. And then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. So Tunisian stitch until you get to the end of the row, and once you're at the end of the row, we're going to have our last two vertical stitches. We're going to have to decrease here as well, so just insert your hook behind both of those top loops, and then yarn over and pull up a loop. And then at the very end, I'm going to cast this one on a little bit differently, so I'm going to use that the loop closest to your Tunisian work. So let me try to show you here. So it's this back loop. You're going to insert your hook into that stitch right there and just grab that one thread and then just yarn over and cast on a loop. So when you're through with this stitch, uh, work your return pass and then you're just going to cast on again, work another return pass and you're going to repeat this for several rows. So you're going to stop working those decreases once the top of your work measures approximately three inches. That's going to be about 7.6 centimeters. So the number of rows you're going to crochet is going to be different for everybody depending on what size you're making this bottom. So 
you just need to crochet until the top measurement is three inches and then we're going to work what is called the gusset. So let me get this all out of the way. And for the gusset, we're not going to do any increases or decreases. We're just going to work regular Tunisian simple stitch rows. So let me get a little closer here. So for the next about three inches worth of work, we're just going to skip that first vertical stitch and we're going to Tunisian simple stitch right into that second one. So here's the second vertical stitch. So we're not doing any decreases, so just grab that one stitch. And then you're going to um, cast on a Tunisian simple stitch in every one of the stitches along this row until you get to the very end. And at the end, you're also not going to do any decreases. So you're just going to work one Tunisian simple stitch in each of the stitches. We want this part to be a, a square. So it's going to be a three inch by three inch square. So 7.6 centimeters by 7.6 centimeters. So see here we're at the end. We're just going to work a Tunisian simple stitch and then one Tunisian simple stitch. And then we're going to work that last stitch of the row. So once you get to this part of the stitching, you can just cast on a row of the stitch like you normally would, and then the edge will look just fine. So once you've got all of your stitches, just work your return pass, and I'll see you again in just a minute. So once you've completed your return pass, you're going to want to add a stitch marker to that last stitch we did. So I'm just going to remove one of the stitch markers from the top of our piece, because we're not going to need those anymore. And I'm going to place it here on this very first stitch of that row we just finished crocheting. Because we're going to need to measure this and it's going to make it a lot easier to measure if you have a stitch marker instead of trying to look at the stitch. So work another three inches worth of fabric and I'll see you again in a minute. Once you have finished the gusset, it should measure about three inches. So let me just grab my measuring tape. So I'm going to measure from that stitch marker to the top of our work. And once you've got that measurement, we can start working on the back side of the, our swimsuit. So I'm also going to place a stitch marker on that stitch, on that very last, or the very first stitch of that last row we just completed. In case we need to pull out any of our stitches or anything, I know when to stop. So that was just kind of a preventive stitch marker. All right, so now we have to work increases at the beginning of every row. So we're going to cast on into that first vertical stitch. So that's going to create that angle that we need for our increase. So just grab your hook, go through that very first stitch, and I'm just going to hold down my thread here. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then just cast on a stitch for every one of the stitches on the uh, along the rest of the row. So it's just all cast on, cast on, cast on. And then when you get to the end, we're going to work our second increase because we have to make this increase on both ends. So at the end, we're going to do a slightly different increase than what we did at the beginning. We don't want any gaps in our stitching. So that's why the, the one at the end is going to look a little bit differently. So once you get to the end, you're going to notice at the very, very end, back of your work, you're going to have these two chains. So you have the one on top and then you have the other one on the bottom, which is the last stitch of the row. So let me cast on my last vertical stitch and then we're going to work our increase into that top chain. So there's my last vertical stitch. We cast on and then we're going to go into the chain, which is the one right next to that vertical stitch we just crocheted. And then we'll pull up a loop. And now we're going to go into that bottom chain, which is the last stitch of the row. And this one, it's just a regular cast on, so don't use that little back loop. Just do a regular one. So that's going to be your increase. Just work a regular return pass, and then I'll show you that increase one more time. So here I'm at the beginning of the row again. And then right in here, you're going to see a, a hidden little vertical stitch. That's going to be the second vertical stitch of the row, so don't, don't forget that one. So go into that first vertical stitch, the one we normally skip. You're going to cast on into that one. And then you're going to go into that second vertical stitch, which is that tiny one I just showed you. And then you just cast on into the rest of the stitches until you get to the end of the row. So then at the end of the row, we're going to crochet our increases into the chains. So we have the top chain where we're going to need to cast on one, and then the bottom chain, which we need to cast on another one into. And those are going to be the increases 
on either side of our uh, swimsuit. So you're going to keep working this, the, the repeat of these rows until the back side of your swimsuit measures twice the length of the front part. So if you need the back part to be a little bit smaller, you're going to measure from this stitch marker, so this one right up at the front side, up until the beginning part of our straps, so right where those single crochets begin. So for me, I've got about four inches. Now if you need the back end to be a little bit bigger, so the back side of your swimsuit, measure all the way to the edge of the front part, so that would add another inch. So here I'm going to measure from my stitch marker and then to the very top of the back side. So I doubled up the four inches from the front and got a measurement of eight inches. So once my fabric measures twice the measurement from the front side, I can stop and add the straps. So for the straps, we're basically doing a repeat of what we did at the very beginning of our pattern. So we're going to add the two straps and then we have to do those four rows of single crochets. So it's going to look just like this front part. So you're going to begin with a chain of 50 stitches. So I'm just going to start stitching right here. So chain 50 and then you're going to work your row of single crochets so that your strap looks just the same as the ones in the front. So work on that part and then I'm going to show you how to do the bind off at the top of our Tunisian work. Once you finish the strap and you've already done your single crochet, so you're back to our Tunisian work, we're going to have to work a row of bind off stitches and this is so that we can close off the spacing in between the stitches. So for this piece, we're going to work a single crochet bind off. So we're going to begin in the very first vertical stitch of the row. We're just going to insert our hook and pull up a loop, just like you would if you were working a Tunisian simple stitch. So using that top loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. You're going to have two loops on your hook. And now we're just going to single crochet. So yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And then repeat that in the second vertical stitch. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and single crochet. So yarn over and pull through both loops. So you're going to do a single crochet bind off stitch in each one of the stitches along the top part of our swimsuit. So this is going to close up all of those stitches at the top and it's going to make a nice even edge. So I'm just going to crochet a few more of these, but I'm going to speed it up just so that I can show you what that bind off looks like once you've finished it. So see it closes up all of the stitches nice and neatly and you won't have these big open spaces between the stitching. So just repeat this stitch until you get to the very end of the row. Once you reach the end of the row, we're going to have to make another strap. So for that strap, we're just going to chain 50 and then you're going to single crochet in all the stitches along this strap until you get right back to the Tunisian work. So once you've finished with that strap and you're right back here with all of the Tunisian work we had just done, we're going to have to begin our rows of single crochets. So beginning on that very first stitch, you're going to single crochet all the way across till you get to this other end. Remember to stop before you get to the strap because you don't want to work your rows of single crochet onto the strap or you'll have a really thick strap. So working into that very first stitch of the row, we're just going to start with a single crochet and then we're going to repeat this in the next stitch and in the next stitch and so forth until you get to the end of this back part. This is what's going to create that block and that block is those four rows of single crochets we made in between the straps, so between the top straps and the bottom straps. So repeat this for four rows so that the front matches, or I'm sorry, so that that back part matches this front part and then we will work these last set of straps. So once you've completed your four rows, we're ready to work the last pair of straps. So we have this one on the side. So you're just going to chain 50 and then work a row of single crochets. And this time when you work your single crochets, you're going to work them all across the top of the suit. So single crochet all along the top until you get to this other side. And then you just chain 50 and then single crochet back. So let's repeat, you're going to chain 50 work single crochets all the way across and then you're going to chain 50 and single crochet right back to this corner and I will see you again right here. So here we go, I've worked that second strap. So I did the chain 50, the single crochets and then the second set of chain 50. So see we've got my strap on this side already. And then here's that row of single crochets. Okay, 
So now that we've done the second strap, we just need to attach it to the bottom. So for this part, you're just going to cut a really long tail end of yarn. You're going to use this to sew. So that's why I say it's, it's quite long. So not the usual amount that you leave when you're just going to weave in ends. So I'm going to pull out my hook and pull out my thread. Make sure that that's all nice and tight. And you're going to grab your yarn or your tapestry needle, whatever you have handy. And we're going to sew the strap on. So now for this part, you do need to pay attention to the strap so you can attach it correctly. So turn it so that your thread is at the bottom and that you have a nice straight even line here at the top. That's how you're going to hold your thread so that you can sew it on to your swimsuit. So just give it a few good stitches. You don't want the strap to fall off while you're swimming. So give it, you know, three, maybe four good stitches and then weave in whatever tail end is left of your yarn. Once you've done that, all you have to do is just go through, weave in all of your end, and then you're done. So now let's take a moment to talk about adjustments because we don't all have the same body types. So there may be some adjustments that are going to have to be made in order for the swimsuit to fit all of us. So let's start with the first part, which is the front part of the, the swimsuit bottom. So the easiest place to make adjustments is at that top few rows where you're working the single crochets. So this is a low rise bottom. If you want something that's a little bit higher or you want the bathing suit to end closer to your belly button, then I suggest adding more than four rows of single crochets. So adjust the number of rows that you want and make sure that you have the same number in the back part of the suit. So if you want a higher waisted swimsuit, just add more rows of single crochets. So maybe start with six rows. So instead of making four rows of single crochet, try six and see if that's how high you want this. Another adjustment that you can also make by adjusting this top part is going to be the width of your swimsuit. So if you don't need it to be as wide as the one that I've made here in the video, you can stop your increases a few rows before I did. So instead of working eight inches of increases for the backside, you can do less. You can do maybe seven or six rows, however many you need to adjust so that the width of the swimsuit fits your body type. And then at that point, you add the height by adding more rows of single crochets to the back part of your swimsuit. So hope that answered any adjustment questions you might have. If you have any other questions, you can just leave them down in the comment section below and I'm happy to help. That was our tutorial for today. Join me next week when we're going to be making a liner for our bikini top. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you would like the PDF pattern for this project, you can find that on my website. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. And also, if you want to see any more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all again next week.